Hi there, I'm Dr. Yossi from VitaLab and I'm going to be sharing a short informative video about a condition called adenomyosis. The interesting thing about adenomyosis is that until not long ago we knew very little about it. Primarily it was diagnosed by the pathologists when women went for hysterectomies they would open the uterus and find a condition where deep in the muscle of the uterus were glands, endometrial glands that should only have been located in the cavity of the uterus now situated deep in the muscle of the uterus. Why that's important to us is because these glands should only be in the middle of the uterine cavity and these glands are affected by estrogen. Every month when a woman's estrogen rises the glands thicken up in preparation for a pregnancy. If these glands are outside of the uterine cavity, they will also be affected by the estrogen and thicken up. But when a woman gets her period, when the blood can then be released through the uterine cavity, these pockets of endometrial glands deep in the muscle of the uterus have nowhere to bleed, and so they cause tiny pockets of internal bleeding inside the muscle of the uterus. And to give you a short demonstration of what that looks like, this is a uterus with the roof taken off, so it's a convertible uterus. Deep in the, inside the cavity of the uterus is the lining, the endometrial glands, and these glands now migrate into the muscle of the uterus. And when a woman gets a period, she lands up with tiny little blood blisters in the muscle of the uterus. So, why does adenomyosis cause infertility? And the honest answer is that we're not convinced that it always causes infertility. In other words, there are many women who live their lives with adenomyosis who don't struggle with fertility. But we do believe that the group of patients that we see in a reproductive medicine clinic, in a fertility clinic, have a much higher incidence of adenomyosis than the general population. When you have these tiny pockets of internal bleeding in the muscle of the uterus, you have a hyperinflamed uterus, almost a uterus that becomes hostile to a pregnancy. You've got lots of white blood cells trying to break down these pockets of blood inside the muscle. The uterus becomes hostile and it becomes an environment that is not friendly for an embryo to implant inside the uterus. If a woman has adenomyosis, how does she present? Well, often our patients don't know that they've got adenomyosis. We diagnose it on ultrasound. But the overwhelming symptom of adenomyosis is when a woman tells us she has an awareness of her uterus all the time, a crampiness. She may spot mid-cycle. She may tell you that for the few days before her period starts, she has spotting, persistent spotting. But there's this constant awareness of a uterus, which most women will go through the majority of their month not being aware that they have, except when the uterus is bleeding. So women will often come to us and say that they have crampiness, they have spottiness, but often they don't know that they've got a problem. When we do an ultrasound though, this is where the condition becomes clear to us. So how do we as fertility doctors diagnose adenomyosis? Well, the first thing every doctor has to do is listen to their patient, hear what they say, listen to what they say about their symptoms. And often that in itself gives us a suspicion that our patients may have adenomyosis. But when we do our ultrasounds, internal ultrasounds, this is where the condition becomes pretty evident. So we either see little cystic collections in the muscle of the uterus, or we see a uterus that's globally enlarged, much bigger than we would usually see. And the other feature that we see is a condition called Venetian blinding in the muscle of the uterus, almost as if there are light rays that are being shined through the uterus, as it would be when your blinds are slightly open and the sun shines through. So these are subtle things that are not easy to pick up to an untrained eye, but if you are looking for them, you may see these subtle changes in the uterine muscle. So what do we do when we find adenomyosis in a patient? Well, if you remember back to the beginning of the video when I described that estrogen builds up these glands, the endometrial glands in the uterus. So estrogen is the food of adenomyosis. And the treatment of adenomyosis is to starve it of its food. So the therapies that we use to treat adenomyosis switch off the estrogen in the woman's body, thereby starving these glands of estrogen. They shrink down, 
and reduce the inflammation, the hostility that exists inside the uterus. The duration of treatment often depends on how significant the condition is. When a woman has subtle adenomyosis, 9 to 12 weeks may be enough therapy to treat the condition. But often we need to treat up to 6 months with quite strong estrogen blocking medication in order to bring the uterus back to its pre-adenomyotic state. This is important because in our patients who undergo IVF, where we've worked really hard to find a good embryo to put back into the uterus, if we put it back into an environment that is not conducive, the pregnancy unfortunately will not be sustained. So we need to be sure that we don't only strive for excellent embryos, but we strive for an excellent environment in the uterus to put the embryo back into so that we don't only achieve a positive pregnancy test, but a healthy ongoing pregnancy. Hope you've enjoyed this video on adenomyosis. Please tell us what you'd like to hear. Like our videos, share them, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more informative videos.